Okay, folks, if you just uh, bear with me, uh, we, interesting enough, and this is a good thing, we have uh, thousands of people uh, across this planet are tuning into this broadcast. And what we discovered was that because the time zones are different, uh, it's taking uh, a little bit more time for people to come on the air uh, to view our broadcast live. And as a result, uh, they're missing some of it. So if you could bear with us, we're going to wait around three minutes. OK, remember, we used to put a, uh, a, a screen up here with a map of Canada, the United States. And then we say, please stand by. And it just took too long. And people thought that because there was no audio, that uh, there was something wrong with their computers. So I'm here to just share that with you and uh, just stand by. And we'll be uh, going on in about three minutes. That's uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And as soon as uh, it's seven o'clock, we're going to uh, proceed with the broadcast. OK, and uh, you might want to share uh, this broadcast. Uh, we found out, folks, that if you press like on uh, Facebook, uh, that the algorithm uh, of our broadcast increases dramatically and uh, it somehow uh, allows the broadcast to get shared much further than what we can ever uh, uh, imagine. Uh, in addition to that, because of what you've done through your prayers, through your support, we're, we're expanding uh, rather uh, uh, rapidly, and this is a good thing. Uh, we launched our uh, radio broadcast, if you will, on Wednesday night and got a tremendous response. So we're doing a lot of great things because of you. You're doing a lot of great things. So we have, uh, it's 6.58 p.m. here on the East Coast. I, found, I, I feel like it's New Year's Eve uh, at Times Square in New York, the countdown of the Big Bowl. So that's maybe what I should do is put a big giant ball here and then at 7 p.m. We lower the ball. We go on the air. All right. So just a few minutes, folks, and we'll be on the air. We'll have a little bit of an abbreviated broadcast tonight, maybe uh, about 10, 15 minutes shorter, because I have to go out and make a speech tonight at a uh, large Republican event. And I'm going to be talking to them about a number of issues, uh, of course, that affect our country. But they're going to hear more about Canada uh, as well. So we've got a lot of great things going. All right, it's 6.59. We have one minute to go. Uh, we're going to open up with a new commercial never seen before. As you know, we have been putting commercials out. Uh, and uh, uh, one commercial we actually shared, and I'll tell you a little bit of that story later, on a platform, and it was uh, dismissed. It was ejected from, from the platform and rejected. Uh, and I'll tell you why uh, when we get uh, on the air a little later. Okay, folks, so about 30 seconds, and I see here and here uh, on Rumble, uh, the uh, viewership is really tremendous, so uh, we appreciate that. Rumble, YouTube, Twitch, uh, we're on about six platforms, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and it goes on and on and on, so uh, we're well on our way. 6.59 p.m. here on the East Coast, and uh, hopefully we solve the problem from uh, people believing that they could have lost uh, audio. And here we go, 7 p.m. Eastern, and, and here we go, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the United States of America. Welcome to, welcome to This Week in North America. So what do you think, folks? That will be posted either late tonight or tomorrow. Uh, now, what we have in store for you tonight is uh, is a summary, a summary of uh, the uh, topics that we have talked about over the past month. Uh, TJ from uh, Truth Seekers will be uh, on with me. She's going to be she's going to be sharing 
the Canadian segment of uh, what we'll be discussing with you. Alan Nicholson will be here a little later to give you an update on what's going on in The Hague, uh, the inquiry that's been ongoing, and they've done a tremendous, tremendous job in gathering the evidence necessary to bring uh, to The Hague with regard to the Canadian government. Now, I'm going to give an update on the U.S. Uh, crisis of violence across this country. Uh, and as I said, TJ will give you an update on what's going on in Canada. Now, folks, uh, I had not planned to talk about this, but because of what happened here in the United States today, uh, I, I have to. I'm compelled to. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, President Donald Trump was indicted about an hour ago. Uh, certainly, it's uh, causing a, uh, uh, a lot of problems here in the United States as I speak. Uh, I can only say this, that uh, in my view, uh, this is not a, a prosecution. It's a persecution of a political opponent. Uh, I've even heard from Democrats who are quite, quite concerned and upset that the prosecutor in New York went down this road. Uh, whether they like Trump or not, the fact is, is that no U.S. president was ever indicted. Uh, I, I always ask the question and have been asking the question for quite some time. Uh, what about Bill Clinton? What about Barack Obama? What about Joe Biden? What about Hillary Clinton? And I could go down the long list. Uh, but where do we go from here as a country? Well, first of all, folks, it is fundamentally important, and I'm talking to the Americans right now, uh, don't do anything uh, outside the confines of the law. This is what I think opposition is looking for. The talk of uh, violence has to stop. Uh, you have to calm down, relax. Uh, let uh, nature run its course. Uh, and I'm uh, calling upon every Republican, Democrat, independent, uh, clear-headed thinking leader in this country to echo those sentiments. We're in a very tough situation here in the United States. We're engaged in a war uh, with uh, Russia, a proxy war with Russia in Ukraine. Uh, Americans, soldiers uh, the other night have been uh, seriously wounded in Syria by uh, Iran launching rocket attacks. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party has sent two very ominous messages. Uh, normally, I don't get concerned about that, but I think they really mean it this time, uh, uh, that they're going to take some pretty uh, swift and effective action against this country uh, in the event the president of Taiwan comes to visit us, and she is scheduled to visit us. Uh, all this as a result of a weak, woke president, a weak, woke Democrat Party, a weak, woke military. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that we've got this, we've got to deal with it. And the way to deal with it is not giving the enemies of this country an opportunity to do real serious damage. So that's all I'll say about the Trump uh, situation right now. And I'm sure we'll have more to say during the week. Well, let me get TJ on the air right now. And TJ, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be on your show. Well, obviously, uh, this is great because we're going to do this the last uh, uh, weekend or the last week, last Thursday night of every month. You and I will be working together to kind of bring up uh, people up to date on what's happening in our countries. Well, to begin with uh, the uh, uh, crisis of violence, TJ, we'll talk about that here in the country and certainly weigh in on any of these things, if you'd like. Uh, we had a tragic shooting here in the United States a few days ago. Uh, Nine people were killed. Three of them were nine-year-old children in a school. Uh, and, uh, of course, the Democrats went off on the gun control issue. And uh, th that bothered me more than anything else. You got young kids killed. You got the adults killed. And the Democrats go off and talk about gun control. I've said it all along, and I'll say it again. It's not about gun control. It's about crime control. Uh, unfortunately, in this country, under the Democrat Party policies, criminals are being let loose even before they go to prison. In fact, I wanna share with you folks a couple of recent cases to begin with. Listen to this one. This happened today, the release of a killer, today. It was on Mother's Day of 1999 when 39-year-old Penny Brown was jogging with her two dogs along an area of the Pensy Trail in Salamanca where Edward Kent, the name of the killer, Edward Kent, who was 15 years old at the time, brutally raped and murdered her. After serving 24 years, the New York State Parole Board has decided to release him from prison today. Today. So here, he, this innocent mother of young children walking her dogs, this, this, this monster uh, grabs her, uh, beats her to a pulp, and then uh, he goes on to uh, rape her and murder her. And so what happened? Well, 
the Democrat Party decides to pass laws that you got to be a little bit nice to these people who uh, uh, commit these acts and you got to give them a break, give them a chance to rehabilitate. This is why I support the death penalty. You know, the, the prosecutors will say, well, you know, the death penalty doesn't deter crime. I believe it does to a degree, but let's say it doesn't. It, but it will deter crime when they're arrested and they're executed. That's what should be done. There should be a death penalty in this country that is upheld by the courts and people should absolutely, without a doubt, uh, be, be sent to prison and then uh, be given the death penalty. And then we have another one, uh, another horrific case. Uh, Frankie Harris, 38, was charged this week, and this happened a few months ago, folks, was uh, charged this week with rape, strangulation, and attempted murder for the May 18th East Harlem attack in which he allegedly put a 64-year-old woman in a chokehold for three minutes, uh, pulling her around by her hair on the ground, raping her and killing her. Guess what, folks? He's out. He's out. So this is the wokeness and the weakness that we're putting up with uh, in this um, uh, country. But here's the, 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 the icing that the, on top of this guy's cake, Frankie Harris. This this atrocious, horrific crime is reported that was two weeks after after he walked away on charges of forcible touching and sex abuse when a, a judge ordered him into another supervised release program. So he was already charged with crimes, and instead of going to jail, they released him. And then two weeks later, he commits this act. So the fact of the matter is, folks, is that uh, we're having some pretty difficult times here with regard to uh, crime oops, crime in this country, and uh, we're going to have to deal with it, and we will. Uh, you heard the glass break, I'm sure, uh, TJ. So I just dropped a, a cup of coffee, and my glass broke I did. from here, and, 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 I, and I'll be right back. <laughs> <clears throat> TJ, it's all yours if you could uh, tell, give us an update on what's happening in oh, Canada. Okay, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to clean this mess up. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Basically, what we have going on in Canada is Bill C 11 is in the second, um, I believe, reading of the Senate. It has not passed yet. It is still being reviewed. Um, a lot of opposition, including the Senate that was picked by Tr Justin Trudeau um, and some of the liberal senators are fighting the bill and disagreeing with what is happening because the Heritage Committee basically wants to put in this bill so that we can only see um, Canadian content. And what they constitute as Canadian content is um, in a short term, um, media that comes from mainstream media. So it seems to be a fight between CBC and mainstream media losing ground on viewerships. So the only way they know how to get back in being relevant is by passing a bill to exclude people um, like myself who are individual journalists and opposition views. This will also make it very difficult for us to get news from around the world because um, world news will not be considered Canadian unless it is being pushed by mainstream news media, which is quite interesting nonetheless. Um, when Justin Trudeau and his cronies are losing, instead of maybe getting better at his job, he decides to pass bills to silence the rest of us. Um, how is your coffee, Lieutenant Rogers? <laughs> Well, folks, <laughs> here it is. Uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you, uh, notice to all husbands, uh, do what your wife tells you to do. All right? Just don't put a, a coffee on, on something that could collapse, especially when you're on a broadcast. <laughs> okay? So, uh, well, well, TJ, this is why we put that commercial out that you saw earlier uh, uh, regarding Bill C-11. We call it the... Um, the, the, you know, the Great Wall of China, we call it the Great Firewall of China, uh, now being built uh, on the uh, American-Canadian border. And that is a message, folks, that is going to be posted tonight or tomorrow. You're the, this is the first time we ran it uh, on all of our social media outlets. We're asking Americans from all over the country to share it. And uh, the purpose of that video is to get it to the hands of the United States Congress. They have to act now. They have to act. 
I mean, the, the, your parliament is pushing a bill that's going to affect us. And TJ, what we didn't realize until today, you know, we do a lot of reporting and talking about this, but we in America didn't realize until today that when the Canadian government starts to monitor and, and at least in my view, spy on the communications of their own citizens, I'm an American. What if I am communicating with a Canadian? They're going to be spying on me. So they're going to be spying on an ally right across the border. So if any of you all there in Parliament and your operatives and uh, uh, you know people who support what I believe uh, comes right out of the uh, uh, red manifesto of uh, communism, uh, understand this, that you're going to run into some serious problems with our country. And I hope you do with our Congress, because we have some serious questions about our free speech being hindered, hindered, filtered, uh, and and uh, monitored by you. Now I could see and I understand that, you know, the Chinese government does this, but you're Canada for goodness sakes. And guess what? You're going to remain a free Canada because you got some great people out there that we've highlighted in some of these videos that are going to continue to fight for freedom and liberty. But isn't that quite a chilling thought? I mean, at least for Americans now. It is. I mean, the liberal government keeps saying that we are a democratic country and that democracy is most important to them. However, it seems that democracy is the last thing in this bill that matters to the liberal government. It's also interesting that some of the large players and donators to the liberal party are in support of Bill C-11 and they also own most of the media in Canada or mainstream media in Canada. And I believe the last three years, the push to have independent journalists speak their truth and opposition uh, opposing views is what basically caused this bill to be pushed through. And not only will this affect um, the online and internet content, but also the books that are being sold in Canada, whether they are Canadian enough. But they won't give us a definition of what it means to have enough Canadian um, representation right. on the internet and in, in Time out. That is the first I'm, I'm hearing of this. You're talking about books also? Yes. So uh, as an author, if you are a Canadian author, if your book is not Canadian enough, um, they will try and silence your book. Uh, public pu pu publication of books uh, as well. Wow. Well, if you could get that info to me, that's something new. We got to get that in the hands as part of our Project Maple Leaf report. This is alarming on how uh, steep uh, and how close to the Chinese Communist Party your government is. Uh, and like I said all along, you know, we, we're not in the business of trying to change uh, their minds, uh, their legislators uh, to get involved internally in, in your government, but our Congress can't. Our political leaders could. So we're making them aware. And I've had the opportunity to speak to a few of them about this, and they're stunned. They just find it hard to believe that Trudeau and that parliament is going down that road. But the light at the end of the tunnel, TJ, is that, you see, these individuals just don't get it. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm sure most of them don't come from uh, the generation that I've come from, where we saw it all. We saw the Soviet Communist Party uh, try to disrupt America and Canada, KGB all over the place, the same thing with censoring and on and on and on. And uh, what they don't understand are two things. One, that they, meaning those individuals who are advancing these pieces of legislation, they will become enslaved to the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, as much as they think that they can get close to communists, as, as, as fierce as I hate communism, the communists hate anybody who's not a communist. Even if uh, the person who's helping the Communist Party uh, helps them uh, gratefully, as your government is, uh, sooner or later they're going to they're going to send them to the dogs. Uh, so, so there's a, there's a no-win situation for any communist sympathizer. Uh, secondly, uh, I don't know any of these people in Parliament have kids because they're all going to end up as slaves to to the, to the communist regime if that goes that far. They, they do. And some of them are even authors and they're even worried that they won't be able to publish their own books and they are senators in our parliament. So, I mean, this has been a push by a certain family with a lot of money that owns um, a very large portion of the mainstream news media in Canada. And they're also donating a lot of money to the Liberal Party. And I believe that they are lost a lot of viewerships over the years because they 
broadcast propaganda and lie to us. And I think the Canadian people are over the lies and they want the truth and they want real news and they want to be able to have different political opinions and views so that we can openly discuss them online as one should in an open democracy. You know, we had this idea, we're not going to go through with it because we don't want to see anybody get hurt because there are a lot of crazies out there. But uh, we were thinking, you know, maybe what we should do here in the United States is uh, establish a communist watch list. Uh, <laughs> like they that have terrorist watch list. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, but you know what? Uh, it's not like the old days. People would look at that and probably, you know, say, hey, look, you got to watch this person. They're a communist sympathizer. But there's so many crazy people out there. They would probably try to do something that certainly uh, wouldn't help the cause. But but that's OK. I mean, from, if we see if we see uh, without uh, any doubt, like in our country, uh, you know, we have no doubts about certain political leaders who are in bed. We had one literally in bed with a communist operative. Uh, we have no problem uh, on advertising that. But uh, the uh, issues here in America, when we bring up communism, we had a congressman. Listen to this, folks. We had a congressman who actually uh, accused the Republicans, in which I am one of them, of uh, committing or causing a red scare. Now, TJ, years ago, uh, when we fought against the Soviet Communist Party, uh, they called it the Red Scare. They're, you know, we're making this stuff up. Well, be afraid of the Red Communists, the Red Soviets, and all that. Well, uh, this isn't the Red Scare, folks. This is the Red Reality. Okay, this yeah. is a Red Reality, a Communist Reality. But we had a com. Uh, uh, yeah, he is a communist, I guess. Uh, a communist sympathizer. And I always use the term in my view for the fact checkers. In my view. Uh, uh, this guy's a communist sympathizer who's defending defending President Xi and his regime when it comes to certain issues that this country is dealing with. So that's what we're doing. Uh, all right. So 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 that seems to be a big issue. Uh, not seems to be, but is a big, big issue in Canada. But I want to, uh, again, let the Canadian people know that, uh, listen, we're with you. We're standing with you. And uh, the more they come after you, the more they come after us, the more we're going after them. All right, what else? What else are you talking about there in Canada? Um, ba the basic loss of freedom of speech, I think, is creating a lot of animosity amongst Canadians. Um, never before have we seen such restrictions, even online, about speaking against Trudeau in the simplest way. I mean, people are getting censored for just calling Trudeau a clown or sock boy, which is an absolute kindergarten insult and should be allowed in a democratic country. However, the censorship right now is so high that it is actually creating a very polarized society. And I'm afraid of what this polarization might add for the future of Canada, just because, as you said, um, with the violence on an increase and and also the liberals here in Canada are being very, um, I should say, liberal on criminals. And it almost seems that we have a kangaroo court where criminals are just being let loose and not even tracked or taken care of. Yet their energy is going into innocent citizens who abide by the law every day and pay their taxes, calling Trudeau a clown online. It just seems... Uh, as if they are trying on purpose to increase the polarization of the citizens so that they might push um, a certain demographic over the edge. And the games that Justin Trudeau is playing, um, as, as we've seen in the United States as well, with all the gun violence and, um, you know, increased in violence in general, is due to very poor leadership on behalf of Justin Trudeau and Biden. I mean, they are polarizing instead of uniting the people. Um, they are going after the wrong demographic for certain violent acts. As you said, they're going after gun control and they are having a reaction in Canada here as well. Instead of realizing that the reason why we're having such polarization and violence in both countries is because both of the leaders are on purposely stroking a fire. You know, uh, TJ, I've said this quite often. It's not a coincidence that America and Canada simultaneously are under attack uh, by atheists, by communists, by socialists, by the devil himself. Uh, I truly believe that. I have always said that there's a spiritual war going on, the one we can't see, but we can certainly feel. 
Uh, and uh, I'm going to be making a speech tonight. And part of that speech, in fact, on the 27th of April, uh, I'll be making another speech. And I'm going to be talking a lot about Canada, et cetera. But I'm also going to uh, talk to, and I might even do something on the air this week. I want to talk to the pastors in the United States of America and Canada. And I've done this before, but I need to do it again to let them know that if there's any time in the history of our countries, they are needed. It is now. Uh, yes. They are needed desperately now. And, and you know what? You nailed it on the head. You know, uh, you and I talked about it before we went on the air about the condition of the populations where they're divided. They're, they're, they're angry. They're mad. Uh, we, we have two nations that are where people are armed uh, and you know, the talk I'm hearing is is really bothering me. Things don't normally bother me, but I've never seen a situation like this in my lifetime where we're so polarized and that the last thing on earth we need is to fight each other. Uh, we have laws in each of our countries and they will work with us, but we got to use our heads uh, and we've got to be able to work within the framework of the law. And, and TJ, I've said this all along, as far as can and we're winning now in America against the Democrat Party. In fact, they're now even turning on Biden. Uh, not because they have any love for us. They only love themselves. And they figure their corrupt lines of uh, uh, their flow of money and their communication and their jobs will all go away uh, if they stay with the sinking ship called the USS Joe Biden. But uh, you have a, a country now where uh, you have a Canadian ship called uh, uh, the Clown. And uh, that that thing, uh, if that thing, <laughs> oh, man, I shouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> I had to do it. Uh, it's unlike me, Steve, please. <laughs> so so, uh, so uh, the ship is sinking, you know, the political ship is sinking and, and they know it. So I, I really believe when things get really tough, they're going to jump ship. But, uh, you know, you bring up some real good points with regard to standing united. We have to stand united and together because we're the good guys. You know, they're the bad guys. Uh, and uh, I think at the end of the day that uh, we win and they lose. Hey, TJ, why don't we bring uh, Alan Nicholson on? What do you think? You think we can handle him when he gets up? Absolutely. Okay, here is Alan. Alan, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Uh, glad to see you on the air with us tonight. I appreciate you joining us. Alan, uh, you know TJ? Have you met her? No, I have not. I have seen her TikToks, and she's doing great work. Oh, great. Hey, before you start, Alan, I want to share this with the audience. And being that you're here, uh, I'm sure you'll get a kick out of it. Uh, OK, uh, we had a, we put a commercial out uh, last week and it was pretty tough. It was showing how the as I said, the Great Wall of China, we now call it the Great Firewall of China being built uh, into the uh, nation of Canada. So the wall is now between Canada and the world, the firewall with regard to the Internet. So the videos go on to uh, show how the Canadian people are standing strong and tough, how America needs to stand with them. Uh, and we ran it tonight. Uh, and uh, we explained that, well, those who support the Chinese Communist Party, uh, they're not welcome in Canada. They are not welcome in America, but they're welcome here. So we show a cell opening up and bingo, that's their new home. Well, what I didn't share with the audience is that we did an experiment with that. We went on all our social media platforms and we put it on TikTok. We actually put it on TikTok, and within hours, within hours, we were flagged, thrown off of TikTok, uh, uh, violated the Chinese Communist <laughs> guidelines. <laughs> and I, that's crazy. It's a fact, folks. Uh, so, so they got pretty well upset at us. So uh, we might try another one and let TikTok know that their TikTok on their time clock is ticking, 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 at least here in the United States. And soon they will be TikToked <laughs> into the wild blue yonder. How do you like that, folks? The Chinese Communist Party is upset with me. Alan, what do we got going with The Hague? Uh, quite a bit. Um, there's quite a bit that's happening. Uh, I do have a whole bunch of notes that uh, to read from. Um, first, would you like me to um, explain a bit from the beginning on what it is for your new audience yes yes Alan. Alan, yeah go ahead Alan we have we have time okay so I'm gonna read from a few uh, things just so so here in Quebec there was a um, close close to 40 people that created a Hague inquiry that was deposited last May of 2022 
there was an acknowledgement of receipt. In July, they received um, a report where they needed, The Hague required additional information and witnesses to which um, in March of this year, everything has been received at The Hague. There was another acknowledgement of receipt. So now we're just waiting for them to hopefully open, uh, let's say the Pandora's box. Um, so I'll read a bit what, what it's about uh, for those who are newcomers. So the criminal inquiry um, is for crimes committed during the chimerical and orchestrated pandemic where there have been multiple solutions observed, experienced, and which are still active today, daily. Let us be the hand, the eyes, the hands, and the voice of those who have endured and suffered in silence, in fear, in torture, in death, in suicides, as it is, in nursing homes, and indigenous reserves and others. For all those victims of crimes against humanity in Canada, genocide, slavery, biology, biolo bio weapons, <laughs> propaganda, stolen territories, sterilization, murder, deportation, victims of permanent side effects, etc. Retaining here the importance that it is possible for us to obtain justice for these illegal acts and crimes committed against living humans and which continues to be perpetrated against humanity in Canada. And that is the Hague inquiry and the resume. <laughs> and you have already got a word from the Hague that they will, they will accept your uh, evidence, correct? Yes, there was an acknowledgement of receipt. Now, for them to open the file, that's all on them. Um, the feeling that the creators of the Hague Inquiry have today, uh, which is sort of not bad news because there's always a plan B, and a plan B is already uh, planned. It's already, it's ready to happen should the um, Hague Inquiry or the ICC, the International Criminal Court, decides to either dismiss or, you know, the, for the globalist agenda, if they decide to go that route, while well, there is a plan B already in motion. Uh, I understand you got that, a couple thousand pages of evidence, of documents? There is uh, the first deposit that was done last May, there was 6,000 pages. And in this addendum that was sent out in March of this year and that was received is an additional 4,000 documents. If uh, for some reason the Hague doesn't proceed with it, I, I believe they will, but if they don't, if you'd be so kind to get those documents to us, I don't I wanna give it to the news media out here. They'll have a, they'll have a heyday with that. That would be uh, our pleasure. Yeah, I mean, 6,000 pages of hard work. Now, your wife, Carol, is she with you? She's not here. She's actually in the living room watching us. Carol, <laughs> so, hello. Carol. Great seeing you. Uh, uh, we, we had invited Carol on, uh, but uh, Alan uh, loves the camera. That's so right. So he told her to stay in the living room. <laughs> okay. DJ, what do you think of that? I mean, uh, they, they, they got this... Uh, uh, I, I remember when they started and, and uh, Alan and a team of citizens and Alan, I, I'm going to say I'm proud of you because you did it the right way. You stayed within the framework of the law. You're staying within the framework of the law. And it seems to me you're making advances. TJ. I would love to see the 6,000 pages and put it on all of my socials and channels and get some of the independent journalists to put some pressure on the Hague um, via public uh, knowledge and putting the knowledge out there so that maybe they might actually hurry up with their decisions on taking the case. You know, well, like I, I said, there is a plan B already in motion. So should they delay or fool around? 
uh, I could guarantee that uh, people like yourself, TJ, uh, is part of Plan B. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, Cal just told us you've got uh, 10,000 pages. So that's and well, from May of last year and with what was sent in March of this year, there's a total of 10,000 documents. Absolutely amazing. Wow. Absolutely yes. amazing. Alan, uh, now, uh, I understand that uh, you, you're, some of your countrymen and women are petitioning your government over a, a matter. Yes. So uh, to finish with The Hague, if you what we need is the support of the people. Um, I cannot emphasize enough that now's the time where whatever arguments you have with your neighbor, set them aside, give each other a hug and move on. Not move on, but come together, unite so we could fight I'm not, I'm not a big speaker. <laughs> I, I, I hear what you're saying. So I'm going to speak like an everyday person. Okay. Move on so we can get this crap out of the way. And once it's done, if you want to go back to hating your neighbor, go right ahead. You know, Alan, I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm glad you said that because it's something that some of us in this country are trying to echo. Forget 2020, forget fixed elections, rigged elections, forget the... The, the, what's going on in the past because the past anchors you down. It, it hinders right. your ability to move forward. But you know what? You, you really framed it well. You know, uh, even if you don't literally hug your neighbor, uh, you could certainly hug them for the cause of your country. And, yes. and I, I think that's important. TJ? Absolutely. I could not agree more. I think we need to stand united because right now the only sides are good versus evil. And I think that most people, no matter what political spectrum you're on, you want to see a better future, not just for yourself, but for your kids and future generations. And I think it's most imperative and important that we stick together now and put most of our petty little um, differences aside, especially for our countries and our futures and our future generation of our children. Because without going down that road, uh, the opposition is having a uh, joyous time watching us fight with each other, uh, to be divided with each other. And this is why in the beginning, at least when we started Campaign for America, we made it very clear that uh, we weren't going to partner with anybody because experience tells us there's turf battles. You know, there's <laughs> turf battles, there's who's in charge, this and that. So, but saying that, uh, we've always invited people from other organizations to come on the air and to unite with us for the cause of the country, not the party, not the Republican Party, but the country. And uh, well said, Alan. So, 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 is so, there anything, anything else going on in your country before we uh, go yes, off and make a, a speech lot. that I want to make? <laughs> you don't see my shirt, but I'm going to stand up. So you, uh, let's see here. So strong and free because of the brave. Ah. <laughs> now, the reason why I wanted to show you the shirt is the other, the other. A fashion uh, show, TJ. We have an unexpected fashion show tonight from Alan Nicholson. There you go. So. I love it. You know, Everybody is going through a lot of emotions. And I personally am not a veteran. I was never part of any war. I was not part of any, but my grandparents were. Now, to show respect to them. That's the reason why I'm here on your show today. Alan. And I find that we have disregarded, uh, this is my personal opinion. I find that we've uh, disrespected, um, dis, dis, disrespected every single veteran that actually stood up to what's happening today in our country. And I think we have to go back to that time and say thank you to everyone. And that's the other reason why you should hug your neighbor now and lock arms and join the fight against this, against the tyranny that the veterans actually went out to fight for us and the reason why we're living today. Let me share this with you, Alan. Uh, I hear a lot of people at times say that, uh, you know, they're not veterans and on and on and on, but you're the veterans of today. You're fighting a war today, all right? You're carrying on the legacy of those who are in combat overseas, etc. And individuals like yourself uh, are truly uh, picking up the flag and, you know, uh, buckling up your boots, if you will. 
uh, because without you and, and all the viewers out there who have not been in the military, uh, don't uh, shortchange yourself. You're fighting that war now and you have a different type of enemy, uh, a different kind of battlefield, but you're fighting that war and, and we're winning. And I, I think, TJ, that's an important point to make that the uh, people don't shortchange themselves, that they are engaged in a historical struggle for freedom and liberty, if not on a battlefield in Europe, on the battlefields here uh, in America and Canada. And may I add that spiritual battlefield that we don't see. Absolutely. I think that we're in a war of information currently and everyone who is trying their best to push the truth out, no matter in which way that you're doing it, you are now the new digital soldiers of the 21st century. Unfortunately, we were fighting a war basically online through information and trying to get the real truth out there before they close in all the walls with all the bills and the laws that they want to pass. Alan, I... Uh... Let's see, I, I read a news report about a petition, Ottawa, I forget what it is. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, I got carried away there with the uh, preview. I just wanted to get that out there. So. Oh, that's, listen, yes. I, I think it was a good thing you did, okay? So for the Hague inquiry, we want the Canadian people to stand up. We need you to back us up. So if you can go to the Canadian Rights Watch website, on that website is the uh, Hague inquiry uh, petition that you could sign, but there is also a new petition that's up and running, and you could find that on petition.net, uh, also at the House of Commons government website, and it's the petition E4369. And that petition, I will read you exactly what it's all about, because it could also help us. So that petition is um, it's a petition to the Governor General of Canada to remove the Liberal Party of Canada for unconstitutional governance. Hmm. Now, I'd like to also um, say that Pierre Polyev has that petition in his hands. And as a Canadian citizen, whether we all like him or not, I am personally calling you out, Pierre Poliev, to push that petition in motion at the House of Commons. Good. And anybody else that feels the same way as I do? Yeah. Because we actually need an MP of the opposition to push it forward. So, Pierre, we choose you as you chose us last year when you came down to the Freedom Convoy. Well, I got to tell you, Alan, that's Good to hear, because you, again, you're doing everything within the framework of the law. Good yes. to hear. Now, well, there's a little bit, there's a, something else that I'd like to say, sure. is that we also need signatures on this petition. Okay. So there's a protest happening in Ottawa this weekend. Come and join us, sign the petition in physical form, and give someone a hug. And as we say, with all rallies and protests in France and England and Canada and America, be peaceful. Work within the framework of the law. Don't get yourself in a situation where the narrative changes from the cause to something that you never expected. Good work, Alan. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to quickly mention that this one. Well, would you like to be the host of the broadcast? Oh, I'm still. <laughs> I'm would you like to be the Every five seconds. Carol, Carol, would you come in and save us? <laughs> So Jason Lafachi was the creator of the petition for the uh, House of Commons. I just want to get that out there. Yes, he sir. started it and figured that one out. So props to him. Anything Thank else? You. <laughs> oh. anything else? Oh, if there's anything else, I'll call you. Okay? <laughs> You're a good man. Good man. Folks, I'm going to, uh, TJ, let's wrap it up with this. Alan, thanks a lot. Thank you it very much. Let me get you off the camera here before you figure you got something else to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, listen to this, folks. We'll wrap it up with this, and we're wrapping up early because I have to make a speech I'm not interested in making, uh, but I got to make it. Uh, NASA's Perseverance rover, that's our spaceship on Mars. All right. This, yeah. folks, look, this just came over. Just came over. Breaking news. Uncovers evidence of ancient life on Mars. What do you think of that? Now, I've always said if there's some sort of life on another planet, the lawyers are going to line up, 
There are going to be all kinds of lawsuits. All right. Probably uh, claims of discrimination against the Martians. And they're not going to like this and that. The lawyers are going to make a fortune. Right, TJ? Do you think so? <laughs> I think I think if there was life on Mars before, maybe we should send all the politicians who are against the people on there so that they can start a new colony and screw it up again by themselves. I don't think the Martians would want them. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Well, TJ, this was great, wasn't it? Um, it's a pleasure having you on the last uh, Thursday night of each month. And of course, we usually go on uh, to the top of the hour, but you know, I do have to run. But any uh, last word you want to say to the audience before you come back? Oh, next next uh, month, uh, I think is April 27th. We will not have that broadcast on Thursday night. We might move it to another night. But if we can't, you know, folks, we'll let you know and we'll keep you posted. TJ? It was an honor being on your show. And I absolutely love it. And I can't wait for uh, next month's th Thursday um, to update all Canadians. And as you've mentioned so many times in this broadcast to for the Canadians to stick together. And I know that the uh, provoking side is trying to get us to react. But the less we react and the calmer we stay and we stay in prayer and we stay in the light, I, I believe that we will beat the evil that is at hand um, in the world right now. That, that is. And, and one thing of note regarding Alan, I joke with him a lot, but you see, folks, how he presented himself calm. I mean, articulate. I mean, he really laid it out. And, and that's the kind of leadership that we all need in this world today. And uh, TJ, my hat's off to you, too, to uh, take the time of standing for your country and doing it the way you're doing it is really a great example uh, for, for a lot of people, especially young people, uh, to see how things uh, should be going. Well, that's it, folks. Thank you for joining us tonight here on This uh, Week in North America. Uh, we've got some uh, pretty hard-hitting commercials coming out against the Chinese Communist Party, who we thoroughly upset uh, over this, this past week, but they got more coming there with their way. Uh, and uh, remember this, folks. Remember what I said about a spiritual war? I mean that. Uh, prayer is a mighty, mighty weapon that we could use against all the attacks we overcome. And again, uh, I urge the clergy, get involved, get engaged. You need help, get in touch with us here at Campaign for America. We've got the tools you need to do what needs to be done without, without jeopardizing your nonprofit uh, status or the things that you need to operate your church. What we really need you to do is talk about Christ, to talk about the Holy Spirit, to talk about the salvation message. Because once you dig into the deep, dark chambers of sin, that was the greatest help you could ever give those of us who are on the front lines of this secular political war. What do you think of that, TJ? Absolutely. I could not agree more. All right. Thanks a lot, folks. You all have a great, great week, and we'll see you next Thursday night, if not before. TJ, thanks so much. God bless you all. Uh, see you real soon. I'm Lieutenant Stephen Rogers. Thank you. God bless.